just completed your Nazi Germany mock exam. You should have already used the first film to review your answers to questions one and two. We're now going to go on to look at questions three and four, of which you should only have answered one. It's a 12 mark question. You're going to use this presentation to annotate your own answer using the guidance given in the film, highlight what you've done well, what you need to do to improve, set yourself a target for the actual exam. As we did before, sample answers for target grades A, B and C will be in red, D, E and F will be in green, and we'll go through each question one at a time. Questions three and four are 12 mark questions and you answer three or four. You choose one, you do not answer both. They're normally a why or how important type question. You will be given bullet points to answer this question. Remember, you do not have to use the bullet points. You can completely ignore them if you want. You can use your own knowledge. You can use the bullet points as a basis, but you must expand on them with a lot more of your own knowledge. If you want to write about something in answer to the question that isn't in the bullet point, that is perfectly fine as long as it is focused on the question. If there's something in the bullet point that you don't understand or you don't know about, ignore it. It is there as suggestions only and you need to trust your knowledge. Make sure you know what you're going to write about when you've read the question. Ignore the bullet points completely if you want to. You then need to go on to write possibly a short introduction for a 12 mark question. Three PEA paragraphs. Point, evidence, analysis. The analysis should be focused on the question, so explaining why or explaining how. You need to try and reach a judgment to answer the question in your conclusion. Okay, so the most important reason, some type of judgment. Question you were asked for number three, if you did answer three, was in what ways did the Reichstag fire in February 1933 help Hitler to increase his control over Germany. Now, quite a few of you here were confused by the bullet points. The question clearly states that the Reichstag fire was in February 1933. One of the bullet points says that Hitler was appointed Chancellor in January 1933. Some of you mistakenly wrote that the Reichstag fire helped Hitler to become Chancellor. Look carefully at the information. Think about what you know. Hitler was Chancellor from January 1933. The Reichstag fire happened after he had already become Chancellor. Okay, let's have a look at an A, B and C sample answer. First paragraph this candidate has written says, The Reichstag fire helped Hitler to increase his power because it was blamed on the Communists. A Dutch Communist, van der Lubbe, was found inside the Reichstag. He was accused and found guilty of starting the fire. This helped Hitler to increase his power because it provided a reason to round up and imprison communists. This meant that he had less opposition in the Reichstag and so had more power. You've got a clear point at the start of their paragraph. There's evidence here to support their point. So explaining who van der Lubbe was and saying that he was found inside the Reichstag. The analysis then answers the question. They're explaining how the fire help to increase Hitler's control over Germany, specifically focused on the question. They've given us a second paragraph with another reason why the Reichstag fire helped to increase Hitler's power. Again, we've started with a clear point. As a result of the Reichstag fire, the emergency decree was signed. Hitler persuaded President Hindenburg that the fire demonstrated a considerable threat to the, to the government and that he should pass the emergency decree. The decree allowed, allowed the Nazi-controlled police to search houses, break up meetings and detain people without trial. But detailed evidence there. They then go on to give us some analysis. This helped to increase Hitler's control because it meant that he could intimidate and imprison opposition groups and stop them from gaining support against him. The emergency decree helped Hitler to pass the Enabling Act. There's a linking sentence there as well to the next paragraph. Those of you with the higher target grades need to make sure you're trying to link your paragraphs together. 
Okay, so we've got clear PEA there again. Analysis is focused on the question. It's explaining how the fire increased Hitler's control. And they've linked us into the next question, which we now know is going to be about the enabling act. Paragraph three is the final reason they're going to talk about. Hitler's power also increased after the Reichstag fire due to the enabling act. The roundup of the communists had helped the Nazis to win 288 seats in the elections in March 1933, but this still did not give Hitler a majority in the Reichstag. Instead, he passed a law in the Reichstag called the Enabling Act. The communists were banned from the vote and the Social Democrats were intimidated, so the vote was passed. This meant that Hitler, con Hitler's control increased after the fire because the Enabling Act gave him the power to pass laws without the support of the Reichstag. You've got a clear point at the start of the paragraph there. They give us detailed evidence. They have used some of the information from the bullet points, but it's only in support of their own detailed knowledge. Then they give us analysis to answer the question, explaining how the fire increased Hitler's control. So we've had three PEA paragraphs explaining three ways in which Hitler's power and control were improved because of the Reichstag fire. They then go on to give us a conclusion. They've written, in conclusion, the Reichstag fire helped Hitler to increase his power because it meant that he could remove the communists by blaming them for the fire. He was able to use the fear of threat to the government to persuade Hindenburg to increase his powers through the emergency decree, and so he was able to pass the Enabling Act, which not only increased his power, but made it legal. So they give us a summary of the main points from their essay. They've clearly answered a question in their conclusion. So how did it help to increase Hitler's power? That it increased his power and made it legal. Okay. Three clear PEA paragraphs linked together with a decent conclusion, which clearly answers the question, is a 12 out of 12 mark answer. Look at your own 12 mark answer. Did you give a clear conclusion that answers the question? Do you have three PEA paragraphs with accurate knowledge? If not, set yourself a target to improve in the exam. This is a D, E or F target answer. The first paragraph. In February 1933, the Reichstag, the government building, was set on fire. A Dutch communist, Van der Lubbe, was found inside. Van der Lubbe was blamed for the fire, and Hitler said there was a communist conspiracy against the government. Because of this, 4,000 communists were arrested and put into concentration camps. The police were allowed to break up meetings, search people's homes, arrest people and put them in prison without trial. This meant that Hitler had a lot more control over the communists and other opposition. This person's given us a clear point that answers the question and detailed evidence to support their point. Their answer is linked to the question, so they're talking about the fire and how it gave Hitler more control with that final sentence there. They've gone on to write a second paragraph, which gives us another way that Hitler's power increased after the fire. After the fire, the Nazis held elections. The roundup of the communists and the ban on the me meetings and newspapers meant that other parties could not get votes very easily. So in the elections, the Nazis won 288 seats, the most they had ever received. This also helped Hitler to pass the Enabling Act, which meant that the Reichstag had voted itself out of power, because Hitler could now pass laws without their support. This gave Hitler a lot more power after the Reichstag fire. Again, they are describing in detail in their evidence, explaining the March 33 election and the Enabling Act, showing good knowledge of the topic that they're talking about. They've tried to link their answer back to the question again here. This candidate's then gone on to give us a conclusion. In conclusion, the Reichstag fire gave Hitler more control because he blamed an opposition group and made it harder for them to gain support. He made it easier for himself to get more power in the Reichstag. They've summarised their main argument here. They've shown good knowledge throughout their answer. There's only two paragraphs, but they do show detailed knowledge of how the fire helped Hitler to increase his power. This would be about 6 out of 12 marks in the exam. So have a look over your own answer now. Does it provide detailed description 
of how the Reichstag fire increased Hitler's power? If not, what do you need to do to improve next time? We're going to have a look at question four now. And the question was, in what ways did the Nazis make use of youth groups in the years 1933 to 45? Again, it's a 12 mark question. Again, you've been given the bullet points. You can ignore them, or you can make use of them to expand upon in your evidence, but they are only an idea. They can be ignored. I'm going to look at an A, B, or C target grade answer. One way that the Nazis used youth groups was to prepare children for their future role in Germany. Boys could join the German young people, then the Hitler Youth. They learned to hike in camp, as well as doing physical fitness training and learning combat. Girls in the League of German Maidens were taught to care for a home and children, as well as developing physical fitness. This shows that the Nazis used youth groups to prepare young people for their future role because boys were taught, being taught the skills they would need to become soldiers and girls were being taught how to be good mothers and wives so that young people would know their role and be able to fulfil it when they grew up. This preparation also helped to keep control of the children. This candidate has given us a clear point at the start of their answer. There's detailed evidence there which shows they've got good knowledge of Hitler youth groups and how they were used. They go on to explain how this was an example of the Nazis making good use of the youth groups within Germany. The final sentence there is a link to the next paragraph, so we know that the next paragraph is going to talk about using youth groups to keep control. Their second paragraph, the Nazis also used youth groups to gain control over young people. There's a clear point there at the start of their paragraph. As part of their youth group activities, both boys and girls were taught about the history of the Nazi party and the injustices of the Treaty of Versailles. They also had to swear an oath of loyalty to Hitler and were separated from Jewish children. Detailed evidence there showing their good knowledge. They then go on to give some analysis. This shows that the Nazis used youth groups to gain control of the young people because they were being indoctrinated from a young age so that they would support the Nazis. The final paragraph from this candidate. The final way that the Nazis used youth groups between 1933 and 1945 was in fighting the war. Again, we've got a clear point at the start of the paragraph. Towards the end of the war, the German army was suffering heavy losses. Many cities were being destroyed by bombs and the Allies were advancing rapidly. This meant that the Nazis made use of youth groups to help fight the war because they had been given military training and they were loyal to Hitler, so they could be used to make up the numbers of lost soldiers and help defend the major cities in the closing stages of the war. I've got detailed evidence again there, and their analysis is explaining how the Nazis were making use of the youth groups. In their conclusion, in conclusion, the youth groups in Nazi Germany were very important in helping to keep control and prepare the children to contribute to the Thousand Year Reich. The Nazis were able to use youth groups to mould the young people in a way that made them useful and good Aryan future Nazis. This preparation was valuable when Germany was struggling during the war as young people could be used to help the fight. Therefore, the Nazis made use of youth groups between 1933 and 1945 to help them to achieve their main aims. This candidate has summarised their main points and given a clear answer to the question that they've been asked. An answer like this will get you 12 out of 12 marks in the exam. So have a look at your own answer. Have you given three PEA paragraphs? Have you tried to link them together? And have you summarised your main points and clearly answered the question in your conclusion? If you haven't, highlight what you need to do to achieve your target grade next time. If this area is a weakness in your knowledge, make a note that you need to focus on this for your revision. This is a D, E and F target grade answer now. Paragraph 1. The Nazis used youth groups to help to prepare young people for their future. There were different youth groups for boys and girls. Boys could join the Little Fellows and the Hitler Youth. In these groups they were taught to march and fight. They were made to be strong and taught to use weapons and fight hand to hand so that they could grow up and join the army. 
Boys also went away on trips to practice camping and survival skills. All of these skills helped when the Germans started to lose the war. The young people had to be taught how to fight, so when Germany was being attacked they could help protect the cities. So youth groups were used to make boys into soldiers. We've got a clear point at the start of this person's answer, and they've backed that up with good, detailed knowledge in their evidence. They show good understanding of the use of youth groups. They've also tried to link their answer back to the question as well. They go on to give us a second paragraph. Youth groups for girls were different because they were preparing girls for a different job. In the League of German Maidens, girls learnt how to care for children and their husbands. They were taught that it was important to have many children with a good Aryan partner for the future of Germany. Girls went away camping and did physical fitness exercises too, so they were healthy and strong. So the Nazis made use of youth groups to prepare girls to be mothers and housewives. Again, they're showing us detailed knowledge, detailed understanding of the Nazi use of youth groups for girls. And they've tried to link their answer back to the question there as well, showing how they were making use of the groups. Final paragraph, a third way that youth groups were used. Sometimes youth groups were used to find people that were going against the Nazi party. Children were encouraged to tell Hitler youth leaders if people did not say Heil Hitler, or if they were... They said negative things about Hitler or the Nazis. The Nazis could then use this information to get rid of people that might try to oppose them or turn children against the Nazis. So the Nazis were using youth groups to keep an eye on the people. Again, we've got detailed knowledge in this answer. They're showing good understanding of the use of youth groups and they've tried to link their answer back to the question. They've given us a conclusion as well in which they summarise their main arguments. In conclusion, the Nazis used youth groups to prepare children for their different roles in Nazi Germany. They were also used to help make sure that there was no opposition to the Nazi party. Okay, an answer like this then with the three paragraphs with detailed knowledge and understanding will probably be about 7 out of 12 marks in the exam. Have a look at your own answer now. What mark have you received? What have you done well to receive that mark? What do you need to do to improve in the future to achieve your target grade? If this is a weak area in your knowledge, make a note that you need to prioritise this for your revision. That's the end of questions three and four. You now need to go and watch the other films to look at questions 5a and b and 6a and b.